every week, all across Britain, thousands of happy couples tie the knot. I can't believe it's actually happening. It's Very just so unreal. The rings! But for some brides and grooms, getting married isn't just a memorable day. <laughs> you may kiss your bride. It's a huge achievement. I had to deal with cancer and then going blind overnight, which was, yeah, quite intense. These extraordinary couples. You are quite simply the most amazing man I have ever laid my eyes on. Refuse to let adversity stand in their way. I want to do it while I've got hair. The changes that have happened to Will have only made me love him more. So we've been through the uh, sickness and health, haven't we? Yeah, we've really done and one vow. Yeah, we've done one vow. As they go to superhuman lengths to make it down the aisle. Let's walk the aisle, shall we? <laughs> no, let's go to the okay. pub. On the happiest day of their lives. There's my graduation photo. Nick and Sophie have been together for six years, and like many couples, they met as students. Your lipstick, kiss boxes, and orange tights oh, really yeah. attracted me to you. <laughs> <laughs> Well, actually, we met when we first started at uni in Nottingham. We were in the same halls, what, three doors along from one another? Yeah. Something like that, three or four doors along from one another. Um, and it didn't take us long to get together. We were, what, the first week? <laughs> it says, stop what you're doing. I have a message. I love you. Message over. <laughs> when did you first see Sophie, Nick? And what do you remember thinking of her? Wow, well, blonde bird. Yeah, <laughs> um, big boobs. Uh, I, I don't know, he just got on. Sophie had the honour of being the first girlfriend Nick introduced to his mum. At first, he just kept talking about Sophie this and Sophie that at uni, and whenever I rang him, he, she was in his room with him, so I knew it was serious soon on, but I didn't think it would last, being that it was his first serious girlfriend. With uni behind them, Sophie got a job in a bakery and Nick started work as an accountant. With dreams of having a home of their own, they moved in with his parents in Cambridgeshire to save money. He was really hard working and he was just going places. I never had a clue that it would be as bad as things were in the end. Carly and Nellie also got together as students. So I met Carly first day of uni, um, which yeah, 18. was 18, 2007, yeah. a long time ago now. We were neighbours, literally. Yeah. I was room 003 and Carly was 004. A passion for sport meant they were inseparable, and one thing in particular caught Nellie's eye. It helped that she was pretty fit, but the fact that we were friends before, so I kind of knew that, I knew that we'd get on. Yeah. What did you think of Nelly when you saw him? He was all right, you know. And we're off. Like thousands of young couples, they packed their bags and went travelling to Asia. Diving, mm. surfing. It was amazing. Carly had always loved the sea and grew up next to a beach in Cornwall. We were very beachy people. And uh, as soon as the, the sun was out, we would go onto the beach, take a picnic. After school, you know, we would go on the beach for tea and it, always in and out of the water. After travelling, they were drawn back to the coast where Carly had grown up and planned to set up home together. When we got back, Carly decided to go back to university to do a medical degree. And I was working as a teaching assistant and we were planning on moving in with each other yeah. in Newquay. We were looking at places to rent. Yeah, just sort of, just before your accident. Just from we? accident, yeah. Yeah. Both couples were about to learn how quickly life can change. In Cambridgeshire, Nick first noticed something was wrong a few days before Christmas 2013. It felt like a horrendous earache, a lot of pressure in my head. You were just on constant painkillers trying to ease this pain in your it. head. It didn't touch it. 
And then New Year's Eve, I had a seizure on this sofa. He was just lying on the sofa. His eyes were open, but he was just staring into space. They rushed Nick to the nearest hospital, still with no idea what was wrong. As soon as we got pretty much yeah. through the A&E doors, I had another seizure and collapsed on the floor. By this point, I just lost it. And I was standing in A&E going, what's wrong with him? Sophie and Nick's mum, Kim, spent day and night at the hospital. But it was Kim who was there when things took a turn for the worse. I think I stepped out into the corridor to speak to a nurse or something. And when I went back into the room, Nick asked me to put the lights on because he couldn't see. And I laughed and I just said, he was looking at me and I said, the lights are on, because they were. It was a really bright room. Um, it was January, so obviously by the afternoon, all the lights were on. And he said, have you closed the blinds? And I looked at the window and the blinds were open. I looked back at him and then I said, why? And he just said he couldn't see. Kim sent me a text saying, you need to come. So I raced up the hospital. I knew straight away there was something wrong. And she just took me aside and said, his, his sight's gone, they don't. They said there's a chance that he might not come back. And then she said to me, please don't leave him. And I was just beside myself. Mm. Doctors discovered the cause of Nick's blindness, a rare form of cancer that had caused huge swelling in his brain. So I had to deal with cancer and then going blind overnight, which was, yeah, quite intense. <laughs> in Cornwall, everything changed for Carly one evening in 2011, when she was out for a friend's birthday. I was at a restaurant in Truro. Yeah, it was a really nice night but I wasn't feeling very well. Um, so I asked my dad to come pick me up. I said I'd wait for him in a car park, and that's what I did. So as I was coming down into Truro itself, I could see these flashing lights. I thought, what's going on here? And I pulled in, and there's a police car and an ambulance there. And with that, one of Carly's friends uh, came running up to me. He said, awfully sorry, James. Carly's fallen in the river. And then blow me. The whole world changed. Well, I had a bit of alcohol inside me, and I stupidly sat on a wall, and um, I just sort of fell backwards into a river, which wasn't really there because the tide was out. So if the tide was in, I probably wouldn't have broken my neck. Nellie got a life-changing call from Carly's mum early the next morning. I didn't quite know the severity of it, so I knew it was bad, but I don't think I was quite prepared. And even still then, even when I knew what had happened, it was still a case of it not sinking in. The doctors took us in the room to say that she would be paralysed. Um, there was no feeling, and from her shoulder, from her neck down, that's when I said to Nelly, you don't have to be with her, you don't owe her anything, um, just walk now, just walk away from it. Why did you say that, do you think? <laughs> I suppose it was a way of me saying to him, go now and don't sort of further down the line. Suddenly turn around and say that you didn't want to be with her. You know, it's, it's a all the heartache in one girl, I suppose. As soon as Kylie had her accident, I had to make a decision. I stopped working, and then I was going up and staying with Kylie four days a week in hospital. It was a long seven months. And then we came back here, and Kylie was in a hospital bed. Why did you sleep? I sat on a mattress next to her bed. On the floor. Two years. Which wasn't too bad, really. <laughs> it wasn't ideal, but <laughs> it worked. In Cambridgeshire, Nick had eight months of hospital treatment before returning home. He beat the cancer, but his sight never returned. So 
Sophie would remind me daily that I needed to marry her. But I probably wouldn't have proposed to Sophie if I hadn't got ill, because I thought, you know, I, I just didn't think there was any need to get married that quickly. But Nick changed his mind and gave Sophie the best Christmas present ever. Once I got ill and she was in hospital with me all the time, you know, if someone loves you, they'll be there all the time, and she was, and she was there every day. So we've been through the uh, sickness and health, haven't we? Yeah. We've done and, one vow. Yeah, we've done one vow. <laughs> <laughs> Nick and Sophie are getting married in six months' time. But they're not the only ones celebrating. Nelly made Carly's dreams come true when he got down on one knee in their favourite woods. As soon as I proposed to Carly, she said to me, um, she, I always said to her that it's not a rush. I just wanted to prove to you that, you know, I'm committed to you. And she was like, oh, you know, that's fine. Let's just be engaged for a long time. And that was probably at 12 o'clock after I proposed. By probably 12.30, she had about 700 Pinterest pages on <laughs> what the bridesmaids were wearing, and I kind of knew it wasn't going to be the longest of engagements. Both couples are now looking forward to a wedding and a life together, yeah. but with challenges they never expected. And how long is it till you get married now? Uh, 92 days. Good hey, try this. I mean, it's going to be an amazing day but it's just not quite how we'd wanted it to go. No. But that doesn't mean that we're not going to have an amazing time. Yeah. Well, the wedding's going to be enormous, isn't it? You know, lots of people uh Yeah, we'll, we'll have to obviously take her down in the wheelchair and, and take her up the aisle and everything else. Um, and you'll do that? I'll do that, yeah. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I don't think it's going to be that difficult. Yeah. Proud? Nick and Sophie are tying the knot in six months' time, and today they're visiting a wedding venue. Sophie, hi, good hi, to see you. Nice Having you lost his now. sight, Nick's come up with a clever way to make sure he can visualise the venue. Is this halfway down the room? Yeah. Oh, so it's quite big. Yeah, it's yeah. I decided, all right, let's go to somewhere I've been to a wedding before. I've only been to two weddings in my life, so I thought, well, this one's nearby. If I've been to it before, I'll remember it a lot more. It's called Longstow Hall, where my cousin got married about eight, nine years ago. There's sort of like a little entrance now going into the main marquee. Is that where the doors are? Like yeah, proper doors? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's the old marquee, basically, yeah. we're going into. As you go into it, there's two huge pipes trees. It helps, obviously, knowing where I am and paying all the money for it. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously, Sophie's helping me visualise it even more. So they've got a table toilet. Have they? <laughs> yeah. And Let's they put that in specially. I don't need to go in the toilet. So is the gazebo around the back of the lake? No, it's they've got like a little island. Oh. Right. I just want him to enjoy it. I want him to sort of not feel like he doesn't know what's going on. Go back up the step, steps. Yeah, step up now. You know, I can look back at the photos, I can look back at the video, you know. But I just want him to feel it as much as he can. Isn't it nice? Yeah. Your text message. How to say the fancy press party. Can you go to Bristol? Attach media. Text message. After Nick's eight months in hospital, the couple moved back in with his family, and Sophie's given up work to help him get back on his feet. Every day, you have to build yourself up to become independent again. The first bit is letting your guard down and let them help you. That was the hardest bit, I guess, because you want to do it by yourself, but you've got to realise you can't. Yeah, I can. What things have been tricky since? Oh, everything. Everything, really. Making a cup of tea, yeah, that's a nightmare as you'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> We've had many of accidents so far, haven't we? Well, the water too just much goes milk. everywhere. Too much milk, too much water. Milk everywhere. Water everywhere. Yeah. Thank God she doesn't have sugar. That's <laughs> See, this kettle way. isn't very good, though, either, because the spout's tiny, isn't it? That's it. Mm -hmm. That's right there. Okay, so I'm getting them out first time. 
before Nick was very independent and far more confident than me. It's like been a massive role reversal. Nick has depended on me more than I ever expected. So it's fine, it? Not too bad. Yeah. In Cornwall, Nellie and Carly have three months until their wedding. The daily routine usually involves a visit to their specially adapted gym. Carly's keen to be as healthy as possible, especially as the big day approaches. Woke up this morning. This is where Carly takes her anger out, mainly on me. Are you ready? Yeah. Nice, let's go. One, two, one, come on. Good work, come on. Nice. That's eight. That's eight. eight. That's eight. How are you so bad at counting? A lot of manual handling. got three months to the wedding and really? nothing's gonna stop me from marrying Nelly, but it's just the fact that I won't be walking down the aisle, which oh trying to accept, that's a big challenge for me. Carly still has no movement from the chest down, Church. and they hope these exercises will help Church. build her strength. Because Carly's not used to standing, her actual heart rate goes up really high, so she actually just has to work quite hard just to stand, so. How does that feel? Um, weird. It just keeps your body in good alignment, doesn't it? Definitely. I normally can stay up quite a long time, but... I think the longest Carly stood is for about an hour and 45 minutes, so... Yeah. She does pretty well. It's quite boring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I feel a bit dizzy. <laughs> Sorry. I feel dizzy. <laughs> Dizzy. This looks really romantic, but Carly kind of just likes resting her head. <laughs> I'm very really dizzy. As the wedding gets closer, Carly has been writing a diary. People always say time is a healer, and I guess I'm still healing. As days tick by, the thought that is permanently in my mind is my beautiful wedding. It's hard not to get excited, but at the same time, the stale taste of being in a wheelchair is permanently crushing me, to a point that I can't see anything past the metal frame that surrounds me. Cool. My family and friends can tell me until they are blue in the face that I'm still the same girl, but there's just something about me now which I can't love. At my weakest, Nellie is able to give me strength to carry on, put my mind at rest, and help me get to my little victories. Come on. A lot has changed. Obviously, we used to walk the dogs and stuff, do stuff like this quite a lot. But um, I mean, that's that's different now, just because Carly doesn't. She doesn't really like people seeing her out and about. She doesn't like people seeing what she looks like now. I think you can tell from her blogs that she's quite, she's quite a deep thinker. And that's her way of, I think, dealing with things. And my way of dealing with things is, like a lot of men, just bottle it up, crack on and do something, do something else. I think that's a good, and there's not probably a good way of dealing with it, but that's my way and it works, so, yeah. Just brought a few sim specs with me just so you can get an appreciation of what Nick can and can't see. Sophie also has to get used to how much life has changed for Nick. Today, specialist trainers are giving her an insight into the challenges he faces. <laughs> Sophie, how much can you see in her glasses? Not a lot. I really can't see anything. <laughs> OK. Brilliant. I can't see any, like, outlines of people or anything. OK. Just find the door lip with your foot. There is a door jar, yeah. so there's a bit of a lip. OK. Okay, and step down. Okay. <laughs> so she's really, really gripping on tight to Helen. Is she? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I'm very slow, very tentative about it. I can feel your tension at the moment. It sometimes helps to walk a little bit faster because then that helps you sort of walk into it. Okay. 
No, but she keeps going moaning at me because I don't make enough cup of tea. And I go, well, it's quite hard, so... <laughs> so I was going to say, if we, if we get the glasses, she can make a cup of tea with a bottle. Yeah, she can. <laughs> she can do all of that. Yeah. It's all about the trust, so yeah. Nick has to put a lot of trust into you, and it's just... You don't realise how much trust yeah. he's putting into me until yeah. you're putting it into someone else. Yeah. I couldn't see the houses or the drives or anything. It was... It was nice. It affects her, but yeah, I do try and stay strong to keep her feeling good as well. This is experiencing what you experience every day. Yeah, I know. And it's not nice. Well, yeah. Well, I, I'm quite used to it. Now. I know you're used to it, mm. but it's just not fair, is it? <laughs> She's dealing with a lot, and I have to, you know, help her out. She helps me out. So, you know, it's still a normal relationship where you do help each other out. Obviously, we've just got a bit more on our plate nowadays. You're going to make the tea for now, then? <laughs> yeah, you were saying about the tea thing. In Cornwall, it's a big day for Carly. The first fitting of her wedding dress, an anxious time for any bride. I haven't seen it for... I don't know. Is it January? Yeah. January, yeah. Because I know you've seen pictures of it online, haven't you? Yeah. You kept looking at it so that you could remember what it looked like. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I was just, like, stunned with... It looked like a mermaid sitting on a rock. Oh, right. It's nice. Yeah, she looks amazing. <coughs> Today's been, like, a big build-up, and I'm just... So glad she looks amazing, isn't it? We know what Carly's been through to get to this point, because it's not ideally what any bride would want to go down the aisle in a wheelchair. And uh, we know that Carly's been apprehensive. She's been worried that she's going to look fat and ugly, but she looks beautiful. And it shows your shoulders that you're a little bit worried about showing. It's yeah. nice. Didn't really know what was going to, what I was going to look like, where is now. Happy. I can go home being like, okay, yeah. that's done. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Oh, isn't it strange how life can be changed? It's just three months until Nick and Sophie get married. Time to choose the all important wedding outfits. We've got the trousers and the shirt in there. Okay. We'll start with the, all right, then. Who's the, taking me? You take me. Uh, so today we're just we're going to try and choose our suits, what colours, waistcoat, jackets, what, if I want towels or lounge suits. This looks nice. Turn this way. It's nice, Decent. It? it? Looks smart. Does it look blue, then? Yeah, it's, a, it's an odd thing to do, I guess. And how do you want to look on the day? <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> Before, you might have begrudgingly given me a kiss in public type thing. Yeah, that's Whereas now, you have to physically feel me for sometimes, you know, to know that I'm there. Mm. You know, so you're probably more affectionate. In a way, I guess, yeah, because I'm trying to, yeah. yeah. Just be with you, I guess. And... Yeah. Oh, I love it. I love being, <laughs> love being affectionate and, you know, just holding on to me. Yeah. What were you doing? Just disappeared. Not now, so. <laughs> Has your physical relationship changed? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say it's changed at all, really. I mean, it's all pretty similar. Um, obviously, I'm not. Um, throwing her on the bed nowadays, because I might crack a skull, but I don't know where we are all the time. But um, now, I, obviously, I will use my sense of touch a lot more. It's got to be strapless, preferably a sweetheart neckline, mm -hmm. and then a quite big A-line. When I first went blind, we sat there and I said, you know, I can't ever, I'm not going to be able to see your face again, and it's horrible. And it kind of did upset me, because, you know, you're never going to see her again. But then, I guess, in her point of view, it's a good thing, because I always see her as a 
a young 25 year old even when she's 80. <laughs> What's this? It's a bow. There's a bow here and it's got two long bits <laughs> coming off the bow. Oh, okay. Can you feel the bow? Can you feel this diamond on yeah, the Yeah, 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 yeah. Can you feel, like, the ruching on the... I don't understand what ruching is, though. It's gathered, uh, gathered fabric. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. And you get here and there's a gathered um, belt which goes into a bow. Right. And then there's a skirt. Let me stand next to you. <laughs> yeah. That's not too far out, is it? No. No, that's quite good. Nearly taller than me, though. I don't like that. <laughs> well, you can put some heels on you. Put some wedges in your shoes. Yeah, OK. If you like it, I like it. Yeah? Yeah. OK. Good. Sit back down. Which one? Sit. Go round the table. It's a glass table. is going out. Do you reckon? No, I reckon it's still going in. In Cornwall, it's also three months until Carly and Nellie get married. Nellie proposed to her two years after an accident left her paralysed. When I first had my accident, I didn't want him to touch me, didn't want him to cuddle me, didn't want him to kiss me, because I couldn't feel it. I couldn't feel him touching me. And I was just like, get off. And now, my favourite thing is comfort around my neck, because I can feel it. Nelly accepts me in my wheelchair. Um, he always has done, whereas I've just found it a big issue. I'm not all what I used to be like. And in a small village, it's harder, because everyone knows you, and i just rather just blend in. In the three and a half years since the accident? Yeah. How many times have you been out in the village, roughly, in the wheelchair? Three times. So not a lot. The couple will be getting married in their local village church. It's just five minutes from their house, but will be a momentous journey for Carly. Yeah, so I presume Carly will be coming down here. And um, obviously, it's quite small, so it's going to be quite nice and intimate. I think we've got about 100, just over 100 guests, so we'll all sort of cram into here, and then I suppose this is where, this is where most of the action happens. And Carly's dreamt about it all her life, I think. And her dream was obviously walking down the aisle, so it's going to be quite intense. It's going to be different on the day of my wedding because I want to go down the road in my wheelchair. And it's going to be hard, but I hope it's not really going to care because I'm actually going to the church to get married. And I think that's what I'm going to be focusing on. OK. Today, Nick's having a day off from the wedding planning, playing golf with his dad. Three and a half foot. Middle of the club. Nipped out. Oh, come on, you got all these. No, you're pulling it. Oh. Come on. Today, we're playing in the English and Wales Blind Golf Society Day. He was quite a good player before. He went blind and uh, he played at a fair standard. Well done. Got there eventually. But obviously, it's starting all over again. I mean, it's a whole new ball game. Um, without your sight. It is important to do stuff separate from save, because I spend all Shot. the time with it. Shot, Paula. Don't beat me by too many, all right? <laughs> be, ge be gentle with him, Paula. <laughs> it is more difficult, obviously, because you can't see where the ball is. But obviously, I've got to rely on my dad as the guide. 95 yards, dead straight, bunker on the right. It's just coming in the trees on the right. Unlucky. Left. Left. Yeah. Can only get better. Yeah. Can't get worse. With well, Nick being the eldest, he's probably the calmest and the most sensible. He's always uh, done things the right way. He went through school really well. We had no problems with him whatsoever. Up to the ball. <laughs> You've got to guide me to the ball. I'm standing here waiting for you. I still find it very hard to accept, but then 
you've got to face reality, I suppose, and carry on and live life as, as normal as possible. Nice and easy. Well done. Yeah, no, definitely it's brought us together because um, we do a lot, lot more, probably more than we ever would have done if he would still had his sight. Good lad. I mean, he's doing everything. Look, there's nothing he can't do and he won't do. Well done. Well done for lining me up. We're getting there. We're getting there. So you want to take your skirt, don't you? Long yeah. skirt. Yeah. Long skirt. Long skirt. You've got your black top. How about um, my navy? It's now a month until Carly's wedding, and she's getting ready for the hen do. How about your high heels? I haven't got any high heels. Okay. Well. This one? No. Big weekend for Carly. It's going to be a hen party. Going to somewhere totally unknown to her. Nelly's not going. He's, he's going to help uh, take Carly there, drive Carly there. But it's the first time that she will have been away without Nelly, um, away from the actual home. I am apprehensive, only because he does everything. I probably could be less reliant on him. And Nelly's good what he does and everything, and it really helps, but just sometimes mm. it's just nice to go, come on, let's just get in the car, I'll go for a coffee. When the day, when the day falls to the light, Oh, oh, there's brakes on too. Where's the uh, unbracing? Are you getting this on camera? <laughs> oh! <laughs> She's mine now. And I chant to the black. You are my lady divine. Oh my god! Did you guys do this? Oh, yeah, sorry, guys. She's doing really well. I think uh, it's nice to see her over there with her friends and. Yeah, it's nice. She's happy. Nick's not letting his blindness get in the way of a proper stag do. What's going on? Is this the right place? I'm Nick's best man. I've known Nick since we're about two years old. If I remember the first time he told me, and I was in a taxi on the way to work, and I just couldn't cope that day. I just had to kind of walk away. Um, but knowing that it was him, and knowing how strong he was, I knew that, fair enough, it was terrible news, but I knew he was going to get through it. I'll have them Hendrix, please, with a cucumber. He's just put orange hairspray in your dad's head. <laughs> and there's 35 of us. It's going to be absolutely mental stuff to do. It's really hard to organise anything. We're going to be embarrassing Nick as much as we can because it seems impossible to do that now. He, he literally wouldn't care if he was walking around naked. It wouldn't, it wouldn't phase him whatsoever. Oh my God. Nick, I genuinely wish you could see this. Dancing <laughs> in a bikini. <laughs> one redhead, one blonde. They fit? Yeah, they're unbelievable. <laughs> oh my God. Whenever Nick gets away with something because of his disability, we say he's playing his blind card, and it's a bit of a running joke. So what I've done is I've gone and printed loads of individual blind cards for everyone here. If you make a mistake, you get a chance to play your blind card. Yeah. Oh. There are, of course, exceptions. People which will not be receiving a blind card because they're already blind. <laughs> I try and sort of put myself in his head sometimes. And sometimes I shut my eyes and think, you know, but then I know I can open them again. I don't know, I don't know where he gets the strength from. I mean, I certainly wouldn't have coped with it the way he's coped with it. And some people don't, but he's, he's amazing. In Cornwall, Nelly and Carly's long-awaited wedding day has finally arrived. Need um, Bob Marley on. Don't worry. 
if you make love. Yes, yeah, songs come out as ordered. I tell you yeah. what I do. It's a big thing, isn't it? You know, a few years ago, we never th thought she would ever think about being married or anything. So it just shows you how how far she's come on, really. She's come on in leaps and bounds. She might not think so, but you know, we can see it. I think it's this way. We shall find out. No. <laughs> and in Cambridgeshire, Nick's getting ready for his big day. Yeah. Listen. Yeah, Have you got nervous at all before the day, or not really? I like last night. I was a bit excited, like just rolling around in bed. I think just excitement. Probably a bit nervous, but I don't feel it. Dapper, mate. I haven't got anything on. Yeah. Cheers. 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 Thank you so much. Yeah. Nice not long now. No, no. Literally, what hour and a half? Hour. Keep going to look at my watch. It's not my watch. Oh, no, no, watch. It's ten to one. Oh my gosh. Excited. You were running down that hour, weren't you? Hello, wings, queen. On the aisle, shall we? Yeah, it's simple. So, I'm going to position you in front of the right hand bench. Yeah. But when you turn around, I'm to your left, slightly in front of you. Mm -hmm. Well, because we're going to turn around to see her walk down the aisle. Oh, right, yeah, we can do. Well, we have to. Yeah, That's, yeah, 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 yeah. And then, yeah, I mean, some points I turn around to her and you just still stand there, kind of thing. Yep. So. Well, yeah, I'll stand facing the other way and I'll just whisper into your ear what she looks like. Yeah. There you go. Don't put your eyes down. In You're all right. You're only but if I should find you black and blue and aching from crying, I'll wait with you. Three years ago, I became paralyzed from a fall. For a long time, I've been stuck in a rut. And there hasn't been a day that has gone by without seeking and searching endlessly for someone to help me step out of this darkness I found myself in. All of this time, I've desperately needed that miracle person. But it's only just crossed my mind that the person I've been looking for could be me. You have all lived through the very bleakest times and it's testimony to not only your deep love for each other but your dogged determination as well that we are here. And the blessing of God... They said that Carly wouldn't move from the neck down and now she sits up, she breathes on her own which is more than a lot, a lot of spinal injury patients do. Every bad thing that's happened in my life I've always turned it into something good. Will you love her, comfort her? Lost my dad when I was young. Protect her. I think I was about as seven or eight. As you both shall live. I will. We lived in South Africa when I grew up, and um, it was pretty, pretty tough times of crime and, and stuff, and unfortunately, Dad was, was murdered on our farm when I was younger. We pray with them. Things the get chucked into perspective. The fact that Carly's accident, when it happened, I didn't lose her, is such a massive bonus. I can just see that no matter what state she was in, it's, it's better than, than losing her. Now, with bated breath, I say, we have some rings. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Carly's mobility's changed, but that doesn't change the way Carly is at all. In fact, I'd go as far as to say that she's a stronger, better person now than she was. I think this is it. This is it, isn't it? Yeah, on then. Forward. Step down. 
and shuffle, shuffle there. Turn around and look amazed. The bridesmaids look fat. And here, oh my God, Sophie, Sophie hair. Sophie looks amazing. Her hair's gone like a lighter tone. It looks like, yeah. oh, honestly, breathtaking. Absolutely amazing. Dress is gorgeous, really, really long. Really I've, I've felt it. Yeah. moments didn't come straight away. It was quite a few months down the line. We had a friend whose wife was on the ward with Nick and she had cancer. And it was only when that she died, that was when everything just sort of came to light. You know, what we've been through was actually really, really bad. Sounds a bit snotty, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> and then, but at the same time, it made me feel really incredibly lucky. I was thinking, well, actually, you know, well, what he has been through is, you know, amazing because he's alive. Go on then, you tell him, you tell him. Yeah. You may kiss the <laughs> <laughs> Sophie's been amazing. I mean, she's 24 hours really with him and looks after him. I mean, they were together, what, up nearly six years when he became ill. You know, she could quite easily have walked away and, and not had that kind of, kind of life, but she decided to stick with him. And, uh, yeah, I'm sure they'll make a lovely couple. Okay, this is the tough bit. Uh, <laughs> I think we can all agree that Carly has um, been through an extremely tough few years since her accident. However, the way she's handled herself throughout her recovery has been incredible. Carly has shown to me that what life throws at her, she will handle it with grace and determination, and I will be with you every step of the way. Carly, I love you so much. And in so many ways, and for so many reasons, you know me, understand me like no one else ever could. You make me laugh so hard and smile so often. You have a way of bringing out the very best in me, but mostly because you're my best friend and my soulmate. I love you with all my heart. Thank you for marrying me. Two seconds. <laughs> ah. Have a drink, Ellie. Thank you. Yeah, I'm going to smash a Jaeger. <laughs> Two seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's got it. That's got it. Um, thank you for marrying me and making me the happiest man alive. Um, thank you for loving me as much as I love you. I know this is the start of a, a lifetime of happiness together. So ladies and gentlemen, if you could all be upstanding for a toast to my beautiful wife, to Carly. Standing at the end of the aisle today, it was a bit emotional, held it together, but you know, in my mind she looked beautiful, and everyone keeps telling me she was beautiful, but was she? Yes! Good, that's what I thought. <laughs> yeah, we're with each other all the time, and she's my rock. Like, I need her for everything, and I need everyone, like all my family now, and everyone, all my mates. 
it's hard because I rely on you a hell of a lot more than I did beforehand. Um, you know, I do rely on you and we have become closer, all of us, to be fair. Um, and yeah, you've been there for me, haven't you? <laughs>